If they lose, it's my fault. If they win, it's on them. You know, that's great. As a coach, you don't want to take all this credit. I want it to be about the kids. Paddlers, are you ready for Brian Yee? Hi, how's it going? So this week on our podcast, we have Brian Yee, current head coach of Lincoln Dragon Boats. Back in high school, he was a uh, volleyball player, football player, and he was a Dragon Boat paddler. So he was sort of this tri-sport athlete himself. Then transitioned to coach Lincoln back in 04, helped coach the CDB youth crew to the 2006 World Championships. He's paddled with different teams like Ripple Effect, Dragon Warriors, uh, and then he's kind of taken a step back from his personal paddling career, but really focused on uh, rebuilding Lincoln Dragon Boats. What do you think has contributed most to the recent success of Lincoln High School since you've gone back to them? Well, uh, honestly, I think it's mostly just kind of like my experience of learning from you know previous coaches about how to recruit and how to uh, build a team. Before I came back, they, I think they're down to one and like a quarter team. So that's why like uh, 30, less than 30 kids. They came in and just kind of kind of brainstormed some ideas on how to bring kids in and going to freshman orientations. I think honestly, freshman going to freshman orientations changed the whole face of this whole uh, team. Because uh, once we did that, we literally got like 30, 40 kids in one group. Yeah. And then uh, they all came out and they all became like great friends. Uh, and then uh, it just really continued and bubbled from there. We make it a fun atmosphere as much as possible. At the same time, we are very competitive. And we're doing really well in terms of just positivity and uh, uh, we've got some really great coaches now. They love them. They lo and, you know, I'm the hard guy and they love them. And so we have a good yin, yin, yin and yang kind of thing going on right now. So. So yeah. you're the bad cop, they're the good cops. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. I'd like <laughs> to say that. That kind of makes a lot of sense there. You have a lot of confidence as, a, as an athlete, but then you also take yourself very seriously as a coach. So where, where do you find your confidence, and why do you why have you chosen to like carry yourself like this? Uh, well, it's mostly respect thing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, just growing up through a lot of different sports, you know, football and volleyball and things like that. Uh, you know, I've had those coaches are like, hey, if you're going to be the leader, and you know, I was I was captain of football. Mm -hmm. for uh for some time too so um they're always like preaching you need to act this way you need to do it mm -hmm. this way and um and if you if you don't present yourself in a certain manner you won't gain the respect of the mm -hmm. other paddlers other teams things like that you know because you know why would anyone want to fear or why would anyone want to respect you if you're going to just be a goofball i think it's just one being taught as a young kid to be respectful to others and uh present yourself in a positive way so you think, um, kind of by you acting like that, do you think it rubs off on like your your kids at Lincoln? And how do you see them kind of take on the leadership role themselves? Well, you know, there's a lot of uh, growing pains in that, right? I mean, uh, my team was, uh, I think it's like 90% freshman and sophomore. Oh, wow. So yeah, there's like when you first took over. No, like right now. But uh, yes, does it does it go through them? Yes, but it, it also makes me look like a really hard ass to them, you know. <laughs> and it, it, it's true, I'm really hard on yeah, them. Yeah. But I want them to be presenting themselves in a, in a certain way. Yeah. And obviously, it doesn't uh, work with all the kids, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. You know, some people will take it in the wrong way. You know, especially like my captains and things like that. I, I I'm very on them. I'm like, hey, you need to be like this, present yourself like that, and then. Uh, oh, so you actually tell them? Yeah. Actively. Absolutely. Yeah. And then uh, sometimes uh, they, they, they just don't, you know, <laughs> but which, which is totally uh -huh. understandable. Yeah, yeah. So like you give them really hard expectations, but you're also really understanding of when they fall a bit short. Yes. You know, but those are the kind of discussions that we have within uh, the coaches. We mm -hmm. see a lot of great things. We see a lot of negative things, but you know, it, it's all just being young. You know, we all make mistakes. Like. Yeah. I remember one time when I was uh, playing football and, you know, I went to varsity as a sophomore or whatever. And then I was like, oh, dude, this is crazy. Varsity's like so good, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Well, that's such a big thing back in your right? life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was the biggest dickhead. I thought I was a shit. <laughs> I thought I was like the greatest thing in the world and I was trying to be this and that. Why do I remember that so much is because I, I am completely embarrassed about it. And that does not make me a good person for that. Mm -hmm. right? And those are the moments that you remember when you made a huge mistake, right? Yeah, and yeah. and that's uh, that's what I'm trying to instill in these kids. So. Did, did someone make you realize that you were a dickhead back in the day or did you realize <laughs> that? <laughs> well, I think uh, personally for me, a lot of it was being involved in, in uh, Christianity and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I was in, involved in uh, this organization called Young Life. 
And, uh, you know, there's moments when I was like, you know, I, I'm better than this. And then my leader would be like, no, you're really not. You really need to understand this. You know, people are maybe not be at the same level, but, you know, you're actually at their level too. And now you're making kids less of the kids. I'm trying. I'm <laughs> trying. It's just, uh... Kind of going back on the timeline of things, after Bob left, like, kind of what happened with Lincoln, and then when exactly did you take over, and that type of thing? Uh, I think it was 2007, I was the next in line to take over, so I, so I just took over and just pretty much did exactly what he did. Yeah. We had a really good base, because I had uh, uh, good sub-coaches too, like Chester Lamb, uh, Crystal Chung, and uh, a bunch of those folks, Doug. Um, so they uh, they helped a lot, you know. If you have a really good base, then they just keep pushing your your top team up, right? So if you have yeah. a good third and second team, you know you're always gonna have competition. To keep pushing up. I didn't do anything special. Uh -huh. I really didn't. I really just did everything that I was taught to do before I took over as a head coach. Whatever Bob taught me is kind of what I did. Was there ever any like pressure to continue that? Because I know like. Bob just like kind of left that impact like he was Lincoln you know yeah, for the longest yeah. time and you taking over like I can't I can't I could imagine you know it's like what that's like you know I mean yeah I mean there's always gonna be a lot of pressure I think a lot of people get scared of the challenge yeah but I mean I was initially scared and you know uh, these folks that I just uh, allowed to coach my other boats get scared too but it is what it is you know you have confidence in yourself confidence in your kids and uh, eventually you do well I think after the first season, you know, after the first five months or whatever, I was it was all good. Like you just mm -hmm. keep continue it, keep continue it. I have a question about recruitment because I feel like our community has been has been sort of dying down. DW went from full three crews every single year to like last year we only had you know one crew at the, at our first race. Mm -hmm. um, but you've done such a good job of creating you know this hashtag Lincoln army <laughs> hashtag where, Lincoln army yeah hashtag. <laughs> where you have you have you know you went from you were saying like one and a quarter boat to now you have you know four solid crews yeah, yeah. you guys push the freshman orientation a lot yeah but yeah you can be there but how did you sell the sport well I mean uh, literally we don't do it the kids would do it mm. right so a lot of a lot of the folks on the team could be like siblings of other uh, paddlers and things like that right you just send the uh, kids there and then they have you know maybe pictures some medals and things like that and in San Francisco you have a lot of kids that uh, have never really done sports okay so a lot of the kids are just uh, not athletically trained so they might not have done basketball or football or whatever in middle school right so um, their parents are there and they want to see them involved into something right so if hey this sounds like a great alternative sport for you to try out and then so they all sign up right so it's it's as simple as putting your name and email and phone number down on a piece of paper to see if you're interested and then we give you a call because it's not necessarily like they're interested interested like you have a dozen kids but literally half of them won't come out because they're scared mm -hmm. you need someone mm -hmm. to encourage them and bring them because they're all looking for something in high school they're all looking for some something to belong to and uh, us getting them in freshman year is that they're getting something like that. They're getting a team. They're getting they get to meet all these uh, great kids. You know, we have a couple kids that uh, came from schools from whatever uh, South Bay, and they're going to Lincoln now. They literally didn't know anybody, and their parents were like, "Yeah, this would be good for them to meet some kids." And that's what we're all about. We want them to meet each other and really, um, when they get into Lincoln, like the first day of school, they're like, "Oh, I know like 50 people." Isn't that the coolest thing in the world? Yeah. You know, and this is a no hassle area, right? You go to Lincoln, it's it's a little intimidating with what, 2,400 kids, right? I'm gonna take a commercial break. Commercial break. This is Ryan Yee, and you're listening to Paddlers. Are you ready? All right, Christian. All right. Well, we're back. We are back. We're back. Commercial um, break over. <laughs> uh, we were talking about uh, recruitment and how Lincoln has been able to build up, you know, four crews. What do you think makes a team jive? What do you think makes a team succeed? A lot of people are saying like, oh, you know, once we start winning, you know, that's when we start to attract people. But you seem to have this other answer right now where it's like, no, you attract people, you make them compete, and then you start winning. Like my goals are never now. Mm. You know, uh, it is when I coach my first boat, whatever, right? But as a team aspect, my goals are long term. It took me over a year and a half to get to this point, right? To get to that top three or whatever, right? Because 
You can't just say, I want to take uh, 20 kids and automatically think that they're going to be first in A. Like, there's no way, right? So you take those 20 kids and you already had those old 20 kids and you build them up into that. Yes, you do attract kids by winning, right? But you have to get to that point where you can win. How do you get to that point? By getting this kind of good group of kids and then boom, and now you're there. So you just got to keep building and keep rolling it on, rolling it on, rolling it on, and then people will always be attracted to that. And if you do fun things, and you know, monetary things is also an issue too. Like we try and keep it like as low as possible for these kids, and uh, and that's what also attracts them too, right? That they don't have to really pay as much as maybe some other clubs and things like that. It's all about long-term building. You know, you don't win a championship tomorrow. What is it then about dragon building that you know you kind of decided like? I owe this to these kids to keep coming back versus like, you know, you, you liked volleyball before you liked football and things like that, but you just said, hey, Dragon Boat, this is the community I can give back to you and I want to keep helping them. Well, you know, I had my hand in volleyball. I, I, I helped coach a little bit too, mm -hmm. but I mean, I'm a product of, of, of Dragon Boat here. I was in the youth program for a couple of years and then we, we did well, you know, and those, those are the experiences that I had that really made me want to come back. You know, in volleyball, I want to, but uh, it's it's a different it's a different thing. We have 20 people right here in, in volleyball once you get out of high school And you're not playing college ball it's just pick up teams and whatever, you know, and it's not like official all the time It's not the same as Dragon Boat. You come out and practice, you know, two or three times a week Right, and it's, it just felt more of an official team You know, I have this camaraderie with this larger community You now are head coach of a high school team. What do you see as your responsibility? In a, in a head coach of a high school team. In I want them to be good people, essentially, you know? Like, Dragon Boat is one thing, it's a sport, whatever, right? I see Dragon Boat as a byproduct, and building them as a good good person is way more important. Mm. You could be the greatest paddler, but if you're a crappy person, then what's the point? If I cannot teach you uh, to be like kind and foster other kids, right, then, uh, you know, I failed, uh, failed as a coach. Back, back in UCLA, the, the founder of UCLA, Dragon Boat, said he believes that Dragon Boat actually breeds good people mm. and he, he thinks that this sport just makes people better. Um, but you, on the other hand, seem to say that it's not an accident. We actually have to actually use the sport and use our power as coaches to teach these things. Can you name maybe like one example of how you have pushed you know, the, the person aspect within your team? All sorts of examples, you know, like when we're paddling out on the water and they say something like, oh yeah, we'd beat that, that team easily or something like that, or or they'd be like, oh, they suck, right? Especially saying something like that. Um, that is like the kind of stuff that makes me like cringe. I had a kid that said that and I, was, I, 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 I got so mad and I yelled at him, of course, right? But um, <laughs> Being the bad cop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I had to. I mean, if, if he doesn't learn, then... then you know, five years down the line when he's paddling for like you guys or something like that, he's going to be the same way. And will you like him? No, not at all. Will don't, you, don't be that guy. Right? <laughs> will you want to go to war with him? No. You know, and I'm trying to foster people with good attitudes that you want to go to war with. Right? And that's, that's why we have Lincoln Army. Yeah. You know, I like to say, hey, we're going to go to war today. You know, we're going to go uh, battle with uh, other teams and things like that. Let's have a positive attitude and whatever, right? And then because... We're building them for for the later on, right? So we're in in five six years they might be like me and you know coach or or paddle for teams stuff like that you know like my my biggest uh, disappointment sometimes is seeing a lot of these kids paddle uh, for us and then they don't paddle in college or they don't paddle in adulthood you know. Oh, oh so that's interesting. Out of everyone from my class at least that I can think of, like. Maybe just me and one other person are still paddling, and that other person is kind of on and off now. Yeah. Just always needs to me because dragon boating's done so much for me individually yeah. that I always want to give back to it and I always want to help it grow. Wait, why do we have such a strong youth program mm -hmm. that does that then doesn't really translate? Mm -hmm. People get get to this high, you know, what they think is elite level, but they don't see the bigger picture of mm -hmm. like, dude, you could be so much better. But in order to get so much better, you have to actually continue. Mm -hmm. right, so you've been in the game for such a long time. What do you think you've learned bigger picture-wise? Uh, you know, ultimately, like, uh, for me, it's all about building, like, the two or three boats. I want to see, like, this entire community just get better, bigger and better. But what I actually see is a lot of kind of coaches make uh, 
kind of subtle mistakes or they think that they're doing this, the, the greatest thing in the world, but then their team is just kind of stagnant and just stays stays at where they are. But then they say that it's because we don't have anyone going to practice, right? Or we don't have any, uh, you know, some of the paddlers just aren't that good or blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, but there's reasons for that. Every team has those people that don't really come out because what, what, I got off at work at five. I don't feel like bringing my paddle yeah, all the way yeah, yeah. or whatever, right? It takes a certain kind of coach. It takes a certain kind of like leadership team to say, hey, like, let's figure this out. Why isn't, uh, whatever, let's say Margie not coming out. Uh, let's figure out how to get her competitive juices out. You know, and that takes a lot of individual work. That kind of ties back to earlier you were saying, if we lose, it's my fault. Yeah. Like, I, I just keep hearing a lot of people say, like, you know, use those kind of excuses, but you seem to really take onus on, okay, if they're not coming out, if they're not doing this, I can't blame them. Instead, I need to take responsibility to try to figure out what I can do better to get them out and what I can do to get their competitive juices. Exactly. I see youth teams like that. I see like a, a team has half a boat out like today, and then in two days from now, they have a full boat. Right? And then two days after that, they have half a butt. And they're like, oh, they're just not responding to the evac. I'm like, why are you allowing these kids a responsibility? Why don't you be proactive and say, hey, I'll see you at practice, right? I want to make sure that you're there. If you're going to miss practice, you got to let me know. So just, just to kind of wrap things up here, as uh, we're running out of time a little bit, um, if you were to sum up like what Dragon Boat has done for you, and, how, and what advice would you give to a youth athlete now? Um, you know, Dragon Boat has been, you know, a major part of my life. I enjoy it. I think about it all the time. You know, I think it's one of the funnest things that uh, I could do with uh, teams. And it's not, a, it's not all about just paddling and things like that. Uh, you know, why I was on Warriors, why I was on Ripple is because we would always go out and enjoy ourselves afterward, right? Um, that's what, uh, that's what it was really all about for me, you know, competing uh, and then having fun afterward. Uh, I would say for youth paddlers, you know, just, just enjoy it, enjoy your time, uh, but look past uh, just the now, you know, you gotta look for the future and, uh, you know, if you don't get that like rage, like to see how you're going to be in like 10 years, then, then it's, it kind of sucks. It's, it's disappointing. You know, I want you guys to be like the best and I want this community to grow and we can't grow unless we foster, uh, you know, from the bottom up. Awesome. Thank you yeah. for being here. Thanks. Thank you, Brian. Yep. Thank Thanks. you. Like our video, subscribe to our channel, check out our website at Pallers. Are you ready? dot wordpress dot com see you guys next week bye bye later